Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be covering compartment syndrome. Compartment syndrome is a very, very important complication of uh, bone fractures that you need to be aware of. And when it comes to complications of bone fractures, there's four main ones, infection, compartment syndrome, DVT, or pulmonary embolism. Those are the four worst things, adverse reactions that we can see happen to a patient that has a broken bone. So for this video, I want to go over compartment syndrome, okay? Now, I put number two next to it because like I said, there are four um, major complications to fractures. Again, infection, compartment syndrome, DVT, and goodness forbid, that thrombus floats and that becomes an emboli and it uh, lodges into the lungs and it becomes a pulmonary embolism, okay? So pulmonary embolism, uh, DVT, a thromboembolism, uh, infection and compartment syndrome. Those are our four um, major complications of a fracture. So let's talk about compartment syndrome. And you'll see right here, I said medical emergency because that's exactly what it is. This is not something that you can sit on because if you do, that patient may lose their extremity. And if that patient loses their extremity, you may lose your license because you should have caught those signs and symptoms. Whenever you get test question about a patient that has a fracture, these four things need to be in the back of your mind before you're even looking at the choices. You know what those four things are, the worst things that can happen, and you're going to be looking for those signs and symptoms, okay? Let's look at this compartment syndrome. It's a condition in which swelling causes increased pressure within limited space. So remember, guys, whenever there's an injury, when there's trauma, your body's going to try to help. So it's gonna send all of these vitamins, nutrients, minerals, WBC to the site of injury to help out, right? Well, all of that fluid that's carrying those vitamins, minerals, nutrients, WBCs, all of that, it causes what? Swelling. All of that fluid will cause swelling, but the problem is the patient's having swelling where? In a limited space, which is gonna cause what? Pressure. Look at this, muscle compartment. Why? Because you have all of this swelling in a very limited space. Because the fascia surrounding the muscle has limited ability to stretch, continued swelling can cause, what does it say, guys? Pressure. Pressure that compromises the function of blood vessels and nerves in the compartment. Remember, guys, the blood vessels are important for transporting blood that carries oxygen that will cause perfusion, right? So imagine pay, um, all of this fluid coming to this area, causing swelling, but there's limited space. So we have all this swelling, but there's limited space for expansion. So now the muscles are being compressed. The nerves are being compressed. That's what this compartment syndrome is. That's what they're talking about. So let's take a look at the signs and symptoms of compartment syndrome. Take a look at this. It says one or more of the following six P's are characteristic of compartment syndrome. Guys, when you see that word characteristic, that's another way of saying classic. Pay attention. You need to know these six P's. Pain. Of course, if somebody has a broken bone, they're going to have pain. But when I say pain, I'm talking about pain beyond what is expected. So a patient has a broken bone. We medicated them and we medicated them with an analgesic that evidence-based practice has shown us. If we give this medication, pain should be decreased. We gave something that evidence-based practice has shown us should decrease the pain and their pain is not decreased. Uh-oh, you better suspect compartment syndrome. Two, increasing pressure. Okay, remember what's happening, all of that swelling and there's no room for expansion, it's gonna cause pressure. That patient tells you they have that feeling of pressure, uh-oh, you better be thinking compartment syndrome if there is a fracture that we're dealing with. Three, paresthesia, that's that numbness and tingling. If the patient, you have a question about a patient that just had a fracture and they're like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm having this tingly feeling in this extremity or this uh, a, a numbness and tingling. You better be thinking compartment syndrome. Pallor, coolness, loss of normal color. So guys, when you touch someone's skin, right? If they're Caucasian, it's supposed to be nice and pink. That pink color lets you know that, um, or 
they don't have to be Caucasian. They can just be less melanated. Um, that pink color is what lets you know there's blood circulation. Or you can check the palm and see that pink color. That's what lets you know that blood's flowing. But instead of pink being pink, it's blue or dusky or pale. That means no circulation or decreased circulation, okay? Coolness. When there's good circulation, guys, and you touch that person's skin, it's supposed to feel warm. That warmth comes from the blood flow. So with decreased blood flow will come coolness of the skin. And then look at what else it says. Um, loss of the normal color um, extremity. Five, paralysis or loss of function. They cannot move that extremity. Think compartment syndrome. And six, pulselessness. You're supposed to feel a pulse dis distal to the site of um, the trauma or the fracture. You don't feel a pulse. Guess what that tells you? There's no blood flow going down to that area. Now, one more thing I want to bring to your attention. Um, number four, where it says pallor, coolness. With that um, coolness, you may get a test question where you won't see that word coolness. You may see poikothermogenesis. That's another P. And all that is is the temperature. The temperature is supposed to be nice and warm, right? not cool. All right. So anyway, those are your six P's. You absolutely need to know them for compartment syndrome. Now let's look at interprofessional care. What are we going to be doing for this type of patient? Prompt. That means right away, we are not sleeping on this. Prompt accurate diagnosis of compartment syndrome is critical. Otherwise that patient may lose their extremity. Pain. Remember that's one of our P's. Pain unrelieved by drugs and out of proportion to the level of injury is the first indication of impending compartment syndrome. Paresthesia, that's also an early sign. You're going to notify the healthcare provider immediately of these changes in the patient's condition. If the source of pressure is relieved, <coughs> excuse me, such as the cast is cut, bivalved, or dressing loosened, by the doctor, pain and paresthesia typically decrease and compartment syndrome has been avoided because the whole reason the patient's having compartment syndrome is pressure on those muscles and nerves because we have all of the swelling to a site without any expansion happening. Maybe the patient has a cast, so that cast is keeping that area from expanding where they have all that uh, um, pressure, okay? Pulselessness, paralysis. You guys need to know this. NCLEX expects you to know this. These two are later signs of compartment syndrome. Guys, as a nurse, if you allow the patient who had a fractured bone to get to no pulse or cannot move the extremity, you did not do your job. You did not assess them well enough because you should have caught it in the early stages when they, had, when they said they had pain or they had tingling or they said they have a funny feeling in that area. You don't wait until there's no pulse down there or they can't move it. These are later signs of compartment syndrome. Look at this, guys. Do not wait until these late signs occur to contact the healthcare provider. Why? The limb may require amputation if the pressure is not relieved. If it becomes too late and you wait until that patient doesn't have a pulse or they can't even move that extremity, they have paralysis, they may have to get that extremity amputated. Guess who's losing their license? You. Okay? Because of the possibility of muscle damage, assess urine output. I know what you're thinking. Professor D, what does muscle damage have to do with urine output? I'm glad you asked. Myoglobin that's released from the damaged muscle cells precipitates and causes obstruction in the renal tubules. Okay, those damaged cells release what? Myoglobin. What happens is they all clump up and mess with the kidneys. Long story short. This condition results in acute tubular necrosis and acute kidney injury. Common signs, you need to know these signs and symptoms. Reddish, dark brown urine and clinical manifestations of acute kidney failure. You're going to see decreased urine output, increased BUN, increased creatinine. Okay. Elevation of the extremity may lower venous pressure and slow arterial perfusion. We don't want that. So we are not going to lower that extremity. We want blood flow to go to the extremity, guys. With suspected compartment syndrome, the extremity 
sh should not be elevated above the heart level. You see this? Similarly, application of cold compresses should be avoided. Why? What does cold do? Constrict. Again, we want blood flow to go to the area, guys. It should be avoided because they may cause vasoconstriction and exacerbate compartment syndrome. Surgical, oh, sorry guys, let me scroll down for you. Surgical decompression, and that's what's known as the fasciotomy, that patient has uh, compartment syndrome, You're, you'll expect for them to have this surgery, that's a fasciotomy, it's gonna be emergency surgery. Surgical decompression, that's the fasciotomy of the involved compartment may be necessary. NCLEX expects you to know this as well. Guys, you see how many notes I have here? NCLEX, NCLEX, NCLEX. Uh, by the way, let me show you a picture of what this looks like. Fasciotomy associated with compartment syndrome. You see how they opened up that area just to allow further expansion for all that swelling? So guys, that is your compartment syndrome in a nutshell. Like I said, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover all four complications of um, fractures. We did compartment syndrome. So in the next videos, I will be covering infection. I'll be covering thromboembolism, and I will be covering pulmonary embolism. Um, if you guys have any questions, please go ahead, sound off in the comments. Let me know what you thought about this video, what you'd like to see me cover further, what questions you'd like me to cover. Remember guys, my questions that I cover for you guys, those questions are released every Sunday, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Don't forget, I have audio lessons available for you on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. And you guys can find me on other social media platforms such as TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Quitter. Twitter. Thank you so much for watching this video and you guys will see me on the next video.